What's up guys, this is Shana and today we're going to check out Beacon Executive Suites, Georgetown, Penang. Let's go! We are now in this intersection along Jalan Sungai Pinang And this address seems like an old one Judging based on the surrounding elements So right at the intersection, next to it you will have all these old structures Then on the other side you will have wooden houses Hmm Then walking along this road right in front of Beacon I've noticed this is a light industrial zone Where you have a lot of industrial properties Especially car workshops, factories, warehousing But mainly car workshops Because here you have Subaru, you have Porodua, you have Honda All main service and repair centers Immediately next to site, you will have the Japanese school and how I judge whether is this a new or an old location is based on the level of infrastructure So you can see the roads are rather narrow Then you look at the power cables, it's still on poles Then you look at the drainage, it's still exposed And you can see they are not really well maintained So although this is located in Georgetown, right, this is not the Georgetown that we know, the one that is a bit more oriented towards the tourism side This is full local where a working Penangite will hang out Because across these roads you can really see people blue collar, white collar All are just heading to work right now The Beacon is one of the latest structure around this entire town This building actually stands out in the drone shot even the landscape, even the pathways and also to talk about the Soho setting right it makes a lot of sense especially when you are located in this address where it's really in between residential use and commercial use you can actually run this as an office if you want to you can actually stay in if you want to you can actually rent it out for temporary homestay also can because ultimately it's still within Georgetown it's still not too far away plus this just got handed over and let's go check it out And this lobby is just in contrast to the entire surrounding You have stone textures, you have gold trimmings It looks luxurious which is good And that luxurious design actually carried into the lobby itself So within this block as well, there are several commercial units And because of that right, they need to demarcate out the parkings for commercial units as well as for the residents So at the back Facing the river, you will have the car parks along the road for the commercial units Also, you have a separate restroom all together for the visitors So that's good Then as for the commercial units itself uh, They were selling at 1.5 million I think 4 units all together All fully taken Wow! As I was walking around I noticed a lot of Airbnb visitors People who just come here for the holidays So I can only imagine if these were F&B outlets, right? Or convenience stores That would provide more convenience to the users So now we are on the elevated car park It's a uh, cement flooring They applied conventional beams and column design So the lowest point of the height will be 2.4 meters It's rather bright because of the opening So you will see the facade creating this interesting profile, right? So coming in through the main lobby, it's really luxurious The entire feeling feels more like a hotel compared to a Soho And once you come up to level 28, we have a mural by Louis Gunn And that reflects through this amazing view In order to preserve the daylight, right, I like the partition up this using glass So you still get light but rainwater won't seep through So this view is just spectacular what you can see here is that unblocked view 
and surprisingly I felt that this is like the very very low dense part of Penang at the far end you can actually see Galaxy very cool and then this can be a pre-function space before the function room outside right and you can actually rent this space all together to host your family and friends to just have some fresh air or whatsoever you have that triple ceiling height On this level as well, you have this library space but somewhat it feels more like a co-working space to me You have a lot of desks for people to hang out and I can almost imagine right, if the office is just too small if you want to operate a hot desk system, some stuff might not have sufficient space you can actually just come up here and enjoy the view and reply your emails then right opposite you have this community hall where it's somewhat like a community kitchen or a community dining hall as well so you have the hall here by Tika, two of them then you have the fridge you have the solid surface Tika basin and you have the oven and microwave and while you are cooking you get to enjoy the unblock view and i guess this is the sharing culture where your unit need not to be big anymore if you have any needs of having a gathering with your family and friends you can just rent the place from the management host your party here you have coffee tables you have furniture you have that crazy length of dining tables and this entire stretch are all open that's very nice and now we are at level 29 and you can see the uh, enthusiasm towards art so at the age we have this children playground where you have the rubber tile floors for safety purposes also they use landscape as a buffer so kids will not attach themselves to the glass handrails and I must say this view is amazing right at the front you have the sea at the back you have the mountain and that's the beauty about Penang and looking at the immediate surroundings you will see a lot of old apartments a lot of this rumah rumah kampung a lot of public buildings that signifies the age of the developments it also means the completeness of the amenities for the local community for example schools commercial area offices place for prayers and etc on the same floor we also have the gym and this gym looks very complete in terms of equipment here you have the cardio zone unfortunately it's not facing the pool but you're facing some landscape area then you have the free weights zone this side I like the size of the mirror that's good and you have the lockers here to maximize all unused space and if you are into outdoor workouts as well you have this little compound here which is very very considerate but what's interesting to me would be this view so there you can see the Kapal Singh Drive and it's only one street away that makes this place a very attractive spot for Airbnb as well so if I were to stay here for a day during the evening I can just take a grab over and enjoy the evening and something to take note as well this area used to flood a lot but during the construction of this particular project the local municipal insisted that they upgraded the irrigation and drainage system along with the floor level of the projects well at least you can fix the problem for new projects but existing ones uh Then on the other side, you will have this swimming pool deck along with this turf area with some outdoor furniture for you to chill two little pavilions here but personally, I think this is the hero space of the entire development and because this is a brand new project in an old address, right? you will have this 360 panorama unblocked view here you will have a timber deck with the kids wading pool and that will be the lap pool with your infinity edge looking across 
to see. Then next to the lap pool, you will have fixtures like this for you to have different interactions with water. You can also just chill around here, enjoying that amazing view. Wow. So because this project is new, there are just more facilities in comparison to the immediate surrounding that mainly consists of flats. So flats are just pure residential components only. The most you have a car park, the commercial areas below and there will be the residence above. The usual affordable slash social housing setting. But this is just in contrast totally to all those. And that's something that I really really enjoy. And we have checked out their project before. Their approach to facilities is quite fascinating I must say. So in the changing room, we also have lockers, we also have the sauna, right? And this is also another piece of artwork. But this comes with its pro and con, so it adds character to a blank wall, no doubt. But what happens if it's damaged or the color faded for maintenance and things like that? Only the artist can repaint or retouch up. So before we check the unit itself, there's 12 units per floor, two passenger lift, one service lift serving them. This is a single loaded corridor. It means that there's only one side of the corridor that has units. So that gives a lot of privacy to the users and there will be not one unit facing each other. Because they located the voids in the center, it's going to be so open. So coming up from the lift, this is the lift lobby. This 3 meters with 4.2 meter high leaf lobby surrounded by two voids, right? It's just so open, so windy, and so bright. Then going into the common corridors, it's 1.45 in width, and this will be the service area. And this will be the utility room. I think it's the refuse chamber. The wall partially tiled up, there's a ventilation there, and there's ventilation through the door as well. And this will be the service lift. Our school they left this service area open. So instead of tiles, they use paint instead for skirting. And you have this 4.2 meter ceiling height. And check out that view, right? Because it's single loaded, it's just so open. But this also has its problem. When rain comes, when the wind hits this direction, it's gonna be pretty wet in this area. From the corridor coming in, you will have this private foyer. This is one of the biggest foyer that I've ever seen. Clearance wall to wall, 2.1 meters. This is 1.5. And only for this floor, level 27, you will have this 4.2 meter height for your ceiling, which is amazing. And this is very special if you want to create that sense of arrival or you want to provide context to what you do in this unit as your business. If I'm doing films, there will be different video frames or whatsoever. Then going into the unit, this door width is 1 meters and heading in, you will have the unit. For this project, right, there's only one type of floor plan which is 980 square feet rather spacious the only difference between unit type is generally the balcony and the ceiling height so when you come in here you will have your dining space living space and this design somewhat suggests this to be a soho which is that pure intent of the project you can work and live in one same area so they position the office to be next to the window as well as a balcony here then you will have two bedroom kitchen attached here and because all unit types will be connected to a void hence they allow this to be a window for ventilation that's very nice then a bedroom this side a shared bathroom then you will have your master suite with your own private bathroom and your own little escape here so coming into this unit, please be informed that this is a show unit. We will go check out an actual unit later without the superior height and the finishing. Coming in, you will have somewhat your living area. Then you will have that boss desk. 
It looks like a desk for your boss. This is somewhat like a fashion designer's office. So as we always discuss in the channel, what makes the space is actually the furniture and the finishing in the space itself. If I were to put long tables here, it suddenly becomes a meeting room. If I put settees here, it becomes a living room. I put a work desk here, it becomes an office. I put a bed here, it becomes a bedroom. So just be mindful that this is just a blank canvas and that's the beauty about this unit type. This product is just so versatile where you can use it as an office, as a unit to stay or in between both office and a place to stay or you can even rent out for Airbnb purposes because of its proximity to all places around, especially Georgetown. And this location is also convenient in consideration for the locals. And for an investors, that is very, very important as we have discussed plan A, B, C, D from an investment perspective. Then for flooring, we have porcelain tiles and the openings are insane. So you can see edge to edge windows. But because this unit is a bit higher, therefore it's not going up all the way then you will have Comta as your background for inspiration. But if you look closely, there's still social housing, affordable housing, public buildings, and some Ruma Kampong next to the riverbank. So there are two orientations to this project, one facing this side and another one facing the mountains. And it's pretty obvious that there's a cemetery there. So the developer adjusted the selling price. They created this price difference because a lot of people will not choose the one facing the cemetery by default. Hence, they lowered down the prices for those units. Apparently, those units are selling so well now. I guess those are investors because view don't really matter to them. It's all about dollar and cents. Now almost all units are taken up besides this level 27 one because of the premium for the extra height. What comes with the unit as well will be this kitchen cabinet and it's an arrangement where you have both sides. So this width is 2.1 meters, very workable with your oven, your microwave, your cabinets. Solid, then your fridge. And at the edge, you will have your window. And all units will have this because all units will have a void next to it. For their hood and hop, they will be using Tika. You will have this solid surface, then plugs by Schneider. Then you have this backsplash up to a height of 1.5 meters only. This is then the first bedroom. In this setting, they made this into an office space for one of the assistants for the fashion designer. Right, so it's again, it illustrates the versatility. The way from wall to wall is 2.7 meters. You will have timber laminated floorings. You will have a window here, very nice facing the internal corridors. So somewhat, it's not for view, it's going to be for ventilation and daylighting. Then for the units, aircons are provided there, explains the box up on this side. There will be a box up here as well. And if you see clearly, there's a sprinkler right there because all these are commercial units. Moving on, this will be the common bathroom. You have the WC by Sorrento, basin by Sorrento, shower screen, water heater, full height water house, and a mechanical ventilation system up above. Last but not least, this will be the principal bedroom, laminated flooring as well, along with timber skirtings. First, you will have your principal bathroom. The tiling textures, I like. You all of the stone textures, but the sign is pretty similar. Then you also have Sorrento, Basin, and WC. And next to that will be your bedroom. So this is the king size bed. You still have enough space for your giant wardrobe, bedside tables, and this amazing view. As your work and living space are attached together, right? It's important to have that private escape space. So this is just a little space for you to have that breather. You have that glass handrails built on a curb and that unblocked view. Then the window size is huge. You have one here, then you have this little vertical ones here joined together. Then your aircon you need above the door. But something important to highlight here, if you were to choose the unit with the extra 
two feet ceiling, right? So this one is going to have 3.6 meters in ceiling height. The normal one is around 10 feet, which is around 3.03 meters. The S1600 is going to create a dramatic effect, but it comes with extra cost as well, especially for your windows, for your wardrobes, for your lighting installation and fan installation and etc. Just be mindful with it. And coming out from the unit, if you are the corner unit, right? Right in front of your door will be this amazing view as well. So, indirectly for every unit, right, you will get this view and that view, nevertheless. Very cool. Now, let's go on to the normal unit that you're going to get. So, now we are in the standard unit. The main difference will be the common areas in terms of the corridor height. Because of its height now, it needs to come with a sprinkler system. But something cool to point out would be that standard grill door design that every unit needs to have. Then for the unit itself, will be that extra 2 feet of height. And it's really amazing to know that 2 feet actually makes a lot of difference. But the materials, the kitchen finishing, toilet finishings, aircon units, are generally the same. The only difference I notice will be the balcony handrail. And it's advisable to check out both. Like one is for you to have context on how to really utilize the space. Because the space actually looks bigger when you furnish them out. And I think it's now time for Sean take three on three. For the three points I really like, number one, definitely the versatility of this project. This freehold Soho in a commercial title, right? just adds up a lot of different functions and layers of convenience to the users. Let's say if I'm using this as my home, it makes a lot of sense. It's somewhat like the service residence where you will have a concierge, you will have the smart parcel system on top of the facilities that you get to enjoy. And then if you're using this as part of your office and your residence, it's also workable as it makes sense for you to meet clients. So if clients were to come, it's very presentable. The lobby design is so grand. You have the concierge to welcome people. The sense of arrival is just nice. You can even host gatherings among your staff along with your suppliers or clients together on the rooftop. That's very presentable as well. Then for the uni layout, everything is just sufficient, functional, entirely a white blank canvas for you to draw up your own usage. That's very good. Another usage will be the Airbnb where in this short visit itself, I've witnessed so many people coming in and out from the residence and it makes sense, which is point number two, the location of this project. Because of its immediate surrounding, it doesn't feel like Georgetown, but it's still under the Georgetown address where it's really close to Komta, very close to Kapal Singh Drive. It's very close to highways. Plus, the existing surroundings are matured. So, basic amenities such as the school, hospital, university, commercial shop lots, whatever you need, right, all will be available. So, all that contributes to this location being very sensible for own stay as well as for investment. And last of all, this is a love-hate kind of thing. The micro elements around the site. Surrounding this project, you will have all low-rise elements such as the factories, the landed properties, the rumah kampung, have some social housing, the medium density kind of setting. And that allows this project to have that 360 panorama view all around, regardless on which floor you are in. Now when you go up to the facility deck, right, it's amazing. On top of that, this developer pays a lot of attention to the treatment of their common areas, function rooms, their library, their gym. They don't take anything for granted, just like their previous project that we visited. And you just have that nice balance between what's within the space and what's beyond the space. The outdoor-indoor relationship is just very, very pleasant. But that is also one of the reasons that I don't like. The immediate surrounding of the site, you have car workshops, factories, warehouses, rumah kampung, borderline squatters, I'm not too sure, very old apartments, as well as the cemetery. Because of the view being so unblocked, you get to see everything. Therefore, all those elements are also visible. Number two would be the infrastructure because this is somewhat that older side of town. You look into the drains that were damaged, you look into the electric cables that are still on poles, roads that are still in one way in, one way out. Eventually, those will become the limitation to 
this side and one of the side effect to that will be the traffic congestion every morning and evening because of the road being so narrow plus all the commercial area along this road right pretty much a lack of car park space around then the last point is pretty both sided as well this is the most modern latest block around this area that's the main reason why price per square feet of this project is generally higher than the rest so the average price per unit is around 650 to 700 plus the one on the higher floors is around 800 plus in comparison to the social housing in comparison to the medium cost apartments it's entirely different so it shouldn't be combat apple to apple so in this setting you will have the facilities you have the luxurious treatments that's very presentable for your business but if you were to check out property guru portal for the long-term rental rates it's around that range as well so if you were to buy and rent out long term immediately you can somewhat break even but based on the observation of the airbnb activities around here i guess they are making profits right now so in conclusion do i like this project i actually don't mind this project it's that low density free home multi usage investment type of property located at the fringe of georgetown and with that thank you very much to the team for showing me this and if you really like this episode like it share it and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is sean tan ciao